Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to do a sequence specifically for athletes and we'll be focusing a lot on the legs and the hips. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. We're going to start using a brick and if you don't have a brick or a yoga block, then you can use perhaps a couple of really thick books so that you've got a platform to work on. We're going to place that to the wall and we'll be working fingertips to the wall for stability, but the right foot, you'll bring the ball of the right foot and the toes onto the wall, and you can lift the left heel up as you work this right heel down. So right heel pressing down, left knee can bend, and if the block needs to tilt a little bit because there's tightness, that's okay. You don't even have to reach for the floor, but if your heel happily reaches the floor, let it anchor there. But just watch that you're not sticking your buttocks back. See if you can press your buttocks forward towards the wall. Draw your tailbone down and lift the navel up so you're staying strong in the abdomen. And then if you've got room, stretch your arms up. So you're stretching the shoulders, you're lengthening through the sides of the chest, but you're keeping your tailbone down and maintaining a lift through the lower abdomen. And particularly if you're finding it a strong stretch, make sure you're breathing smoothly, slow your breath down. And slide the hands down, let's step off. Right foot steps off the brick and left foot steps on. So again, it's the ball of the foot and the toes. You can lift the right heel up as you straighten the left leg, descend the left heel. You do want to work the heel towards the floor. And that brick may need to tilt up a little bit if you're feeling quite tight. Again, just watch that you're not sticking your buttocks back. As the left leg stays straight, press your hips forward towards the wall, tailbone down, and draw the navel up. So lifting the lower abdomen. Then reach your arms up the wall, shoulder width hands. So have a look, make sure your hands are working evenly up the wall, shoulder width apart and then you can bring your forehead towards the wall. Keep the tailbone descending and the lower abdomen lifting. Then observe the quality of your breath. Make sure you're breathing smoothly. Then we can slide the hands down the wall and step off our brick. Now we're still going to use the brick and the wall, but this time we're going to use it with the heels to the wall. So we'll be working both feet together. So give yourself three quarters of your foot's length between the wall and your brick. Stand the balls of the feet and your toes up on your brick, and then you'll slide your heels down towards the floor. So bring the ankle bones, big toe bones together, slide the heels down. If you're quite tight in the calves and the Achilles, you may need to let the front end of that brick flip up off the floor somewhat. But you might notice as you're working the ankle bones together, then we're trying to get the heels down simultaneously, how one calf muscle or Achilles tendon feels a bit tighter than the other. So notice whether there's any distinction there for you. And then Watch that you're not uh, letting the buttocks push back into the wall and, and your belly pull forward. We're going to draw the buttock flesh down, lift the navel up so you can get your hands there on the lower abdomen, help to lift the lower abdomen up, pubis to navel up, so the lower back stays long and broad. And let's pin the shoulder tips, the back of the hands to the wall, staying strong here in the mid body, so you're supporting your lower back. And if you're feeling this is a very strong stretch, again, be really mindful of your breath. Keep tuning into your breath. Consciously slowing it down, steadying it. And then let's take the arms out and up. If you don't have room on your walls to take the arms out, then you can stretch them forward and up like so. Palms can face each other, thumbs towards the wall. And just watch that you're not letting the back ribs pull away from the wall. Breathe smoothly. And then you can slowly lower the arms and we'll step off the brick. 
Let's take our mat to the wall now and we'll use bricks underneath the heel. So if you've got two bricks, place them against the wall so that they are running along the wall and we'll bring our heels onto the bricks for dog pose. You can start on your knees and have your toes curled under with the feet reasonably close to the bricks. Stretch forward. And if you find your hands tend to slip on the mat, sometimes it's helpful to catch the outer edges of the mat. That also can help us roll the inner arms forward. So as you're ready, inhale, shoulders forward, lift up your hips and plug your heels to the front corners of the bricks. Now at this stage, we're not doing a very strong stretch in the lower legs, but in the hamstrings. So draw the sitting bones up as you stretch your mat forward through the arms and the hands. So the grip of the mat, you can feel that you're trying to stretch the mat forward away from the feet. And you draw the sit bones up to lengthen the back of the thighs as well as to straighten your spine. But as you plug the heels down, there may or may not be a stretch in the calves and we're going to work to exaggerate that stretch soon. Smooth, steady breathing. And now let's bring the heels down to the floor on the inside of the bricks. So stepping the heels down, see if you can get the heels down and just notice if it's causing your back to round. Do your best to lift the sit bones up. Perhaps it's gonna be helpful for you to walk the hands in a little bit towards the feet. But again, we're drawing the sit bones up to bring length to the back of the thighs as well as to the calf muscles. And then we'll come down out of the pose. So you can bend your knees and rest the head down on your forearms. Let's come up and bring the bricks in front of you so that we can do Uttanasana, which will be more with the focus on the hamstrings. So you can have your tall bricks and come to stand with the feet as wide as your mat, the hands on your bricks and lengthen your chest forward. Here you're wanting to lift the sit bones up, lift the buttocks up so that there is the challenge here in the back of the hamstrings. You may or may not be feeling a stretch, but if you've got further to go, in the pose, you've got further to stretch, then you can lower the bricks. You can potentially even bend the elbows and let yourself fold forward and down. One of the reasons why you might not bend the elbows and go more deeply into the pose is if the lower back is sitting higher than the back of the pelvis. So for example, if the hamstrings are tight, and it's pulling the, the hamstrings are pulling the sit bones down and the pelvis isn't rotating forward enough, then the lower back may be um, pushing up, protruding, sitting higher than the pelvis. And even though you might be getting a stretch in the hamstrings, there may be some strain occurring in the lumbar spine. So be mindful of that and do what you can to rotate the pelvis forward so that you're getting that length in the uh, hamstrings as well as in the lower back before you bend the elbows. And then we'll come up and out of the pose, but not all the way because we're going to bring the bricks forward and we'll step the right foot forward between the bricks, stride the left leg back. So we're in a lunging pose. So now our attention is coming to the hip flexors here, the muscles on the upper front left thigh. And as you set yourself here, you want your right knee vertically top the ankle, the hands on the bricks so that it helps us keep the chest open. Sternum forward, shoulder tips back, and you're wanting to move the hips forward, but keep the inner left thigh rolling back. And as you sustain this, let's slowly straighten the back leg. So you're pressing the left shin bone up, opening the back of the knee, rolling the inner left thigh up towards the ceiling, 
and still you're drawing the breastbone forward and pressing the shoulder tips back towards your hips. Then bend the knee to the floor, hands to the waist, lift your chest up and use the hands on the back of the pelvis waist area to move the hips further forward towards that right foot. So you're magnifying the stretch in the hip flexors. Chest is up, shoulders are rolling back and down. And then let's come forward onto the hands, we'll swap our legs. So left foot forward, the toes are tucked under on the right foot as you come forward. Then make sure you've got your left knee vertically top the ankle and the right knee is as far back as you can take it so that you're getting the significant stretch opening in the upper right thigh. Chest is forward, lengthen the breastbone forward as you press your shoulder tips back towards the hips and roll the inner right thigh back. So that helps keep the back of the pelvis level. Easy, steady breathing. And now slowly straighten the back knee. So you're pressing the right shin bone up, straightening the right leg. Still you're rolling the inner right thigh up towards the ceiling. And you're still maintaining length on the front body, breastbone forward. Shoulder tips back towards your hips. Then place the knee to the floor, hands to the back of the waist, the back of the pelvis, and press the hands into the pelvis to help you move the pelvis forward. So you're getting more of a stretch through the upper right thigh. Roll the shoulders back and down. Feel the chest is broad, collarbones are broad. and then you can come forward onto your hands and step out of the pose. And we'll just kneel for a moment. If kneeling doesn't suit you, then you can sit on your buttocks with the legs out straight. So we're wanting to allow the legs to relax after the poses that we've just done. We're going to bring a chair and a blanket in for the next pose. So let's come up and get those props. You may like a blanket draped over the front of the seat of the chair so that that provides a bit of padding and then uh, you'll most likely want a blanket here for our knee. We're gonna bring a stretch into the quadriceps. So here, uh, let's bring a couple of bricks for our hands. That may help with our stability. So you can lean into the bricks whether they're tall or lower and step your feet forward so they're off the blanket and we'll take the right foot onto the top of the chair and bend the right knee down to, towards the floor. So the knee's coming onto the floor and then when you come upright it's as if this left leg's in a lunging position but we're bringing stretch to the quadriceps there on the front of the right thigh. So if you can you bring your knee vertically underneath your hip and then you sit your hands on your waist. Keep this outer left hip rolling down. If there's a, a strong um, stretch or there's a feeling of tightness or resistance in this right thigh, then commonly the left hip will want to lift up. The left waist will shorten. So we do our best to roll the left hip down, having length in both sides of the waist as we challenge the right quadriceps. While we're staying here, let's interlock the fingers, stretch the arms up, keep the outer left hip rolling down and the navel lifting up. Lower the arms and let's come out of this side, step the right foot forward and left foot back, so left foot's on the front of the chair, bring the knee down to the floor, so the knee's coming underneath your hip when you come upright. Hands are on the waist, and you can stack your right knee vertically top your right ankle. But you lift the chest up, roll the shoulders back, keep the tailbone lengthening down as the navel lifts up. 
and get steady in your breath as you steady your gaze. Now interlock the opposite index finger on top and we'll stretch the arms up. Lift the arms, lift the rib cage, particularly working with the back ribs lifting. See if you can keep pressing the hips forward, buttocks forward, tailbone down, pubis to navel up. Then exhale your arms down and you can step out of the pose. We're going to finish with simple cross legs forward bend. If you're tight in the hips, having a chair to work with can be really beneficial. If not, then perhaps uh, bricks. But we're going to use the blankets in a particular way. So I'm going to just move my props around a little bit. I'll bring the chair here. So I'll demonstrate with the chair and then I'll also demonstrate with the bricks. If we have a long narrow folded blanket and then another blanket on the back end of that. Now this blanket could be folded up even more if you feel tight. So for example, you could fold it over itself again or even more you can create, so I'd call this a two-fold, you could then create a four-fold blanket if you feel really stiff. I'm going to demonstrate just with that two-fold blanket on top of the, the long narrow two-fold blanket. And so then if I'm sitting facing my chair, I'm sitting on the highest point and I bring right shin in front of the left with the ankles and the outer feet on the sticky mat on either sides of this long narrow blanket. So the narrow blanket is supporting the outer ankles and shins or just above the ankle there and shins. And it's also helping to define the positioning of the knees. So commonly when I see uh, students come into simple cross legs, if they're not familiar with the way that we practice in Iyengar yoga, the uh, knees tend to go out wide and the feet come in close. We're not getting as adequate a stretch in the uh, gluteal area as we could. And it can cause uh, lopsidedness in the way that we're leaning uh, forward. So here we've got equal weight through the buttocks and the sitting bones. Then we can come forward to stretch over the legs, over the shins, but we can be restful. So the forearms can come onto the seat, forehead can rest on the forearms. But if you've got more stretch, you've got more to give when it comes to coming forward in that pose, then potentially you can use a brick or two for the forehead to rest on. And the arms can be a little more active. Either way, we want to ensure that we're using our breath to help facilitate a letting go in the hips. So particularly if you feel that there's tightness, resistance in your hips, just notice if it's causing grimacing. <laughs> if your facial muscles are um, becoming tense or if you're clenching your jaw or you're holding your breath, see if you can diminish tension in those areas. You might find in time you can even lower the height that your forehead is coming onto. Long, slow, steady exhalations can help us in letting go of resistance, letting go of tension. All right, let's come up and we'll swap the legs. Bring your left shin in front. And again, you've got the outer edges of the feet and the ankle bones on the sticky mat on either sides of your long, narrow, two-fold blanket. Watch that you're not pulling the feet in too close. Keep the shins out parallel to each other. The knees and the feet are contained within the boundary of your mat. And then you can come forward. And again, find out what support suits you for your forehead to rest on. Lengthen the breastbone forward, so you're maintaining length in the front of the body as you come forward. Then see if you can deliberately slow your exhalations down.
And as you do, diminish tension around the eyes, through the cheeks, the jaw. Keep your teeth slightly apart. Then as you're ready, come to sitting. And we'll just sit for a moment and observe our state. Observe the sensations in the body. Observe the breath. And then you can finish up. There are many ways of practicing to support the body if you're an athlete and um, we can stretch all sorts of areas with many different types of poses and many approaches to the poses. And if you're keen on practicing with me more, I have a very extensive video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au, where we have full length classes and there's over 390 classes and it's building every week. I add a new class to the library. You can sign up today with a seven day free subscription. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.